So, let's see who's joined us. We have nine people Ooh. watching us. Yes. Very excited. Audrey, Hunting Ground Films, Clarissa. Yeah. Wendy. Hi, Michelle. Sarah. Is it Uber. Jenny, Jeannie, Melissa, Rachel. Hawaii. Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, I want to go to Hawaii so much oh, right me now. Too. Sounds good. Not that I was not just on vacation. Kylie, Michelle. you stayed up. Go to sleep, Kylie. It is late over there. Kate, hi. Ira, hello. All right, cool. So today we are going to talk about lighting situations. Let me get rid of this text message. <laughs> um, lighting situations that are difficult. How many of you shoot film or shoot digital and yet as soon as you get to a reception or a darkly lit room, you really, really struggle. You have no idea how to get consistent photos time and again. You like have your flash one way and it shoots and you're like, yes, that's amazing. I'm a rock star. And then you do it the exact same way two seconds later and it looks like crap. How many of you have that issue? I got one heart. I used to. Hi, okay. Michael. Yes, that yeah. used to be me for sure. The worst. So I have that issue a ton and I was looking for somebody to really mentor me. And all of a sudden somebody sent me Camilla. This is Camilla, my awesome friend Camilla, who is the most lighting genius in the whole world. And she's been doing this for over 10 years and she was the first person who explained off camera flash to me in a way that I actually really, really understood it. And now it's super easy. I travel all over the world shooting weddings and I only take one backpack and her system is so compact that I can take it in my carry-on and I can shoot weddings all over the world. And a lot of my destination weddings take place on the beach. And so there's no ceiling. There's nothing to bounce my flash from if I was shooting on camera. And that just leaves me in a world of pain when I'm trying to bring these amazing, hi over here, bring these amazing pictures to life. So once I learned Camilla's system, I really, really changed the way that I shoot. I can fit it all into a backpack and then one part of it goes into my checked luggage um, and it's really, really concise. So I'm gonna turn the time over to Camilla to talk a little bit about some of the things that she recommends for getting started. We obviously can't go through the entire process, but we're hoping to give you enough information that you will feel like once this is done, you can go and conquer some off-camera flash stuff. So Okay. <clears throat> just hearing you talk about that reminds me how stressful it was when you talk about bouncing. Let me just talk about bouncing, because I'm not saying it's the worst. I just never do it, because I feel like you are at the mercy of your surroundings always like your ceiling the color how high it is how big it is if you're outside if you're inside and I hate giving up control of any situation I want to be in control so I want to bring my light I want to know that I can always put it at a certain distance if I want to a certain power it's going to be a certain color if I don't like the room I can shut the lights down in the room I can kind of hide everything and then bring my own light so that's why I really love this but uh, a couple things before you get started with off-camera flash. The first thing you want to do is you want to understand your camera settings and your flash settings, which I'm sure most of you already know how to shoot in manual and you understand how to turn up the power of your flash, but there are other factors that you need to learn. For example, the distance of your flash is going to affect the power of your flash. If you get closer, it's going to be a lot brighter, um, but your ambient light will be the same. So it's a lot of the relationship between the ambient light and the flash. So you could look online to learn a lot about those settings, but your ISO and your aperture affect your ambient light and your flash. So just like when you're shooting in natural light, if you turn up your ISO and your aperture, you uh, shoot wide open, you're going to get a lot more light in. Same with your flash. When you're inside, you're going to get more light and you're going to get more flash. But with your shutter speed, you're not. You're going to drop your shutter speed, you're going to get more ambient light, but you're not going to get more flash. And okay, like, so say that one more time really slowly for those <laughs> of us who really struggle with understanding that. So 
your first thing with the flash is one, I think one of the first things I learned from you is always keep the same distance away. Mm -hmm. So my new rule is I don't shoot more than five feet away with my off-camera flash. So I have an assistant who holds the off-camera flash five feet at all times. Mm -hmm. So I'm not constantly adjusting my flash. Exactly. So that's the first thing that I think is absolutely key is you need to get a system where you can be the same distance away from everything that you're shooting. And you do that by having a second person. So yes, this does require a second person, mm -hmm. but it will change your life. Mm -hmm. And I have found assistance all over the globe to help me come and just do the dark hours at the reception or the events that I'm shooting. So one thing is you need to stay the same distance away from everything that you're shooting. Does everybody understand that? Give me a little heart if you understand that first thing. Yes. The first thing to why your photos suck in the nighttime the is because you're shooting at e different distances distance at all times. To not you to your flash, but the flash to your subject. To the subject, so you exactly. Can, like you can have your assistant with a flash and shooting at Darcy over here, five feet away, and I can take a picture of her close up, and then I can go across the field and take a picture, and the light will still be great on her because my yeah. assistant stayed five feet to her. Yes. Or how, whatever the distance is that you decide that you want to be it doesn't it can be whatever yeah you I can move wherever I can get far away I can get close up but my person who holds my flash stays five feet away from who I'm shooting so let's say the bride and groom at all times with the flash pointing towards their noses mm -hmm. it's just always towards their nose five feet away at all times yes Watch your assistant. Sometimes they get lazy and then it's pointed down at their <laughs> midsection. My Nobody assistants wants do not that. get lazy. I give them the evil eye if they get lazy. Nobody wants that. Okay, so that's the first step. Okay, everybody clear on that? Camera settings. Do you want me to go over them one more time real quick? So, yes. Yeah, so, now, Just once you understand that you need to stay the same distance away, then you're going to work on your camera settings. And there are two parts, as we know, aperture and shutter speed. So, let's talk about aperture Aperture first. and ISO. Okay. Just like when you're shooting natural light, we know if we change those settings, we can let in more light, and that's going to be the same with your flash. You're going to let in more of all the light. You're going to let in more of your ambient light, like the light in the room that usually is orange in a reception, and you're going to let in more flash. So everything's going to get brighter, but not with your shutter speed. So that's really useful because if you ever take a picture and you feel like you have the right amount of flash, but let's say your shadows are too dark, you only want to change your shadows because your flash is good. You can change your shutter speed to let in more ambient, and it's not going to change your flash. Like, they work independently of each other because the flash fires so much faster than the shutter is open, which is, we don't need, need to get into that. But the shutter only affects your ambient. So you can play with that, and it gives you, like, you can make really different photos just by switching that up and down. So the way I understand ambient light is if I want the candles on the table to be more glowy... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you see what a non-professional yes. photographer I am? Even words like ambient light sometimes confuse me. And so for me, I think, oh, okay, if I want the candles on the table to be more glowy, more ambient, have a little bit more light in the photo while keeping my subject completely well lit, I mess with the shutter speed. So I just take mm -hmm. it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. yep. It's that easy. And most people think shutter speed is going to affect how much light from the flash is coming in, and it doesn't. And it's really hard for people, film shooters especially, to get this in their heads because the shutter speed is so important when we're shooting in daylight. It's so important. But at nighttime, it's not that important. It's just if you want it to be a little bit more ambient, a little bit more glowy, a little bit more pretty, uh, then you can lower the shutter speed. But other than that, it doesn't really affect your flash. That's crazy totally. to me. It's crazy, but it's so useful. I feel like I should have gone to college for this stuff, but it's I didn't. It's so useful. So things that affect the, how much flash you're gonna have, your ISO, your aperture, and the distance to your subject. So there's three things. Boom. Then there's your shutter speed that affects only the ambient light. Yes. So those Look are important. this camera just for a little bit. Study just to make those. contact. Four things, everybody. Study that. And if you can't remember that, I'm sure that if you Google that, there's something you can find and print off. But hopefully, we can rewatch. Can they rewatch this? Um, I don't know, I Instagram. Don't know. Can they? <laughs> 
Instagram. Don't even get me started <laughs> right now. Or you could come to a workshop and we can review it in depth. It'll be great. Okay, we have a question that says, what do you start your ISO at? Mm. Good question. Mm. That is a very good question. So that has a lot to do with vision that we're going to talk about in a minute, but I would say 800-ish. I like 800. 800's a good. I sometimes shoot around 12 because I like it to be a little bit. Oh, I'm at... 2,000, 3,200 yeah. a lot too, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah. So receptions, anywhere between 800 and 2,000 I think is good. Yeah. I usually try not to go above 3,200 because that's the highest film stock I use, so mm -hmm. I feel like they pretty much equal out. So, yeah, I mean, just check your light when you get there and start at 800 to give yourself a s mm -hmm. start. Julie says, Camilla, Julie you are gorgeous. Four exclamation Julie points. Julie Parker, I haven't seen you in years. It's good to hear What about from the you? shutter speed and, and sharpness, sharpness of, of your, your photo? photo. The Great sharpness question. comes with aperture, doesn't it? Well, the sharpness, yes, but I think she's talking about like the blurring of if you have a oh. slow shutter speed, they're going to be blurry. But not if the flash is your main light. If you have more flash, if your flash, this is very technical, if your flash is more powerful than your ambient light by, I would say like a good two stops, like it's definitely the main light on your subject, it's going to freeze them. It's so fast, it's such a fast pop that they can be dancing and you could be like at a 60th and it doesn't matter because the flash shone on them so quickly that they froze. That makes sense. Which is why, guys, we need to actually learn how to master flash because we're tired of giving sucky reception photos where everybody's blurry. Are you tired of giving Don't blurry reception photos Don't where you that. just are yeah. hoping that one of the first dance photos is going to be no. in focus? If you are that person, please keep listening. <laughs> okay, so I hope that answers your question. Wendy, thank you. So, um, so we're just going to just go off camera settings. We're going to go to number two. Uh, we can come back if you have questions. Keep asking. So after you understand your settings, you have your assistant, then you're going to get step two is to get your flash off your camera. Get it off over there. Make a little triangle. Even if it's off a little bit like, you know, a few feet, it's going to make a world of difference. It's going to look natural. And you can get it to avoid things that are in your way. You know when you're dancing, they're dancing. There's like everyone's parting. And there's all these guys often wearing white shirts. And there's a guy in between you and the couple and you flash and it's from your camera and it just gets them. It doesn't, like it doesn't even, you need to be able to pass people, but you might still want to get layers. You know, you just want flexibility. So you need to get it off and you need to get some direction. Yes. Okay. And how you do that is you get some kind of radio transmitter. I use pocket wizards. Just any, any radio transmitter. It doesn't matter. Just get whatever floats your boat. Yeah, I can, I'll send out um, a list of what I use uh, when I post this video on YouTube so you guys can watch it again. Okay, so that was a really easy step. Literally okay. having a reception right now and feeling all this. Oh, Wendy, I feel you. But you don't have to do that anymore. You can start doing this at your next wedding and you will jump for joy. It will change your life. I mean it. It's so worth taking the time to figure out because feeling stressed and crappy when you edit is not, it's not worth it. I'm over it now. I'm over it too. It's, it's just awesome. it's worth the time over. to take to figure it out. Do you use a light meter? I do not use with a light meter. Digital, I do not use a light meter because I just look at the back of my camera with Me film. Too. I do. We're not going to get too much into film tonight. I will save that for a second part that we'll do maybe next week or something mm -hmm. because I don't want to confuse you too much. But everything we're talking about can generally be applied to digital and film. Mm -hmm. So I have a question over here. Um, Jeannie asks, can you talk about setting shooting, shooting Fuji 400H with off-camera yeah. flash? Yes, but I'm not going to go into that today. Don't hate me. I just want to, the whole point of today is to get really specific about the distance from you and your subject, mm -hmm. the understanding what the shutter speed actually does and means for shooting, and then talking a little bit now about aperture, right? We'll ask that. Jean, 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 Jean. Um, just I was just say the most important thing. I can't tell you what settings, but um, yeah, that distance thing with film because you can't see. Just it's very important. It is very important. Don't change that distance, or you're gonna not realize that. And I'll just say a quick thing about yeah. film. When I'm doing um, like table settings and stuff, I actually just hold a. Um, I just have my assistant, instead of doing flash, I just have her hold a video light, and I meter 
when the video lights on and I shoot that way and it totally works. It's just really easy I that you don't that. have to do it without off-camera awesome. flash. awesome. Hi, Aliona. Hey. Okay. Okay. So, so we now did camera settings. Aperture. It's off your camera. And uh, I think the next thing after that, I mean, now you know what you're doing, is you need to know what you want. So what room are you in? Is it beautiful? Do you want to show off all the walls and everything in the background by letting in a lot of ambient light? Or are you in a room you don't want to show off? You want to shut that ambient light down and make it more of a black dark background with like maybe only sconces showing through what do you want do you want one flat light on their face or have you seen stuff online from other people where they have, you can tell they have multiple lights and you really want that what do you want yeah yes. so i think one of the first things to do to figure out what you want is start a pinterest board yes do pinterest you know about board. starting pinterest boards yes that's my big thing for this year she's a little pinterest i'm caught it crazy um Start a Pinterest board and start post pinning pictures, don't worry if they're film or digital, of what kind of nighttime reception photos that you like, that you really feel capture what you want, that you feel like you're missing. So for a while, I just was giving everything to my clients slightly out of focus and I could, it was black and white and it was really pretty and I realized I did love that, but I was totally failing them and giving them sharp in focus photos of them on the dance floor, of the table settings at night. I would shoot them during the day and just think, okay, well, I got them during the day, so that's good enough. But there's something special about the whole room that comes together at night. And I just felt like I was really missing out on capturing that part of the story for my clients. And so I found that really finding what I wanted things to look like was the first step and then finding Camilla and hiring her to teach me how to really adjust all my settings for my off-camera mm -hmm. flash. So that would be my first assignment for you is to go and build a Pinterest board completely of night, dark time shots and nighttime dark yes. shots and see what starts to... And pin a lot. Don't just pin five. Try to get as many as you can that you love. Spend some time doing it. Dedicate like a whole evening or maybe, you know... 20 minutes a night for like a whole week to get a good sample because the more you pin the more you'll start to find patterns yeah. in things that you like and won't feel like it has to be a certain way but you'll start to find okay I like you can dissect the photos a little bit more oh I noticed that I have a lot with flash but movement or I have a lot yeah. with this and that and then you can start to take the steps necessary to figure that out to yeah, I found something once I figured out off camera frat flash I found out I really loved when the client was in focus but the lights behind were all zigzaggy and I had yes. never been able to achieve that before ever it I saw it everywhere and I couldn't freaking do it and I was charging a lot of money for wedding photography and I didn't know how to do that once I found that out my bookings for weddings have gone up so much because I am way less afraid to show them an entire gallery whereas before how many of you just want to show them like the best 100 daylight photos that you take and not show them the entire gallery so I can show the entire gallery. In fact, sometimes I just send them like lots of, I'm like, here are three dance galleries, just look at them because I know it's a huge selling factor now where it used to be one of my biggest weaknesses in my photography business. So that I think is really fun when you can start to pin and find these exciting things that you don't know how to do that all of a sudden are going to become really easy for you to do. I'm so glad that you don't have that stress anymore. I know, it's all so because happy. of you. I Thank like you. go and shoot these beach weddings and now they don't suck after the sun sets. I always would die, like, I have to get everything before sunset because I can't get like, and now I still have these big weddings and they take place at night. I'm doing one in Honduras this weekend and they want to do all their family photos after the reception and after the marriage ceremony and it will be dark and I used to be totally afraid to try and do like staged photos with just my on-camera flash mm -hmm. and now I fear no longer everybody mm -hmm. let me be a lesson with, to each of you yes with even just one simple off-camera flash just mm -hmm. one flash you can do a, a, a big group yeah I do huge yeah. groups I and do like up good. to 60 mm -hmm. yeah even just getting them up the flash up even just a couple feet higher than your camera makes a world of difference Right? Yeah. Yes. It does. Okay. Yeah. Else, okay. Guys? Do you guys have any questions? Do we need to talk about aperture a little bit and then we'll wrap up for today? 
Like did you do it? it? We, okay. talk, we talked about it in camera settings. It's going to affect the power. It's going to affect your flash, just like your ISO will, um, but not your shutter speed. Okay. So that's cool. important. And I mean, if you want, other than that, everything's the same. If you want uh, like softer, more wide open images, I mean, you can still do that. Oh, there is something that you need to know about shutter speed too when we talk about that with, uh, depending on what radio transmitter you get, um, there are limits. So with my pocket wizards, you can't go above one two hundredth of a second with Canon and one two fiftieth with Nikon, mm -hmm. or you're gonna start to see like a black. You'll bar. know when you go over. Yes, you'll know. <laughs> you'll see a black bar come up on your photos, yes. and you'll be like, "What is this?" And then you'll remember to lower but, it. Yeah, so you need kind of a lower shutter speed, but that's no problem because, like I said, your flash freezes your subject. Yeah. So. So okay. okay. So if you guys want to learn a little bit more, I think Camilla has some details that she can give out, but you want to go to her Instagram and message her if you want to get mm -hmm. more information on, she hosts an in-person workshop. I went to it. It was amazing. She had a whole setup of flowers, cake, bride and groom in a really darkly lit yellow venue and taught us how to shoot really clean. She brought several of her setups and next time maybe it's helpful um, to have the exact equipment that we use, but I'll post it on the YouTube video. So if you guys have not signed up for my links to get my YouTube videos, go to DarcyBenincosa.com. That's such an easy name, right? You all know exactly how to spell that as soon as I say it. Um, it's just what person you're looking at right now, look at that and add a .com after it and then go. And I'll send you the gear in the newsletter. So I'll send you exactly what we use. And then if you want to learn more from Camilla, what do you want them to do? Go send you a message. Yeah, you can just DM me. I'll respond there. Yeah, if you guys want to get on the list for being aware of when she hosts the next workshop in Utah, best money you'll ever spend on learning off-camera flash. I cannot express it enough. This isn't our last talk. We will talk again about, um, I'll talk more about film next time.